Hi, and welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Senapataratna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack, and we will get started. Today, I am drinking from my lovely friend again, a Brown Ashley Gourmet Apple Orchard Green Tea. I know I'm normally a black tea drinker, but these are worth a try, right? And I also, because I'm being festive, have a Little Debbie Christmas tree cake. I know. Oosh. It's really good, though. <laughs> so let's get real. I want to tell you about an experience that we had as a family on our trip. I know I've talked a lot about our trip, but I really feel like there were some great moments that God just opened my heart and opened my eyes to what he was doing. This happens to be something that I am kind of hesitant to share. To be honest with you, I am very vulnerable normally, and this is something that kind of makes me nervous. So we were um, on our way out of Paris and trying to get back to Brussels. So we cut things really close. We did something that we never do as a family. Normally when we're on vacation, we go one place and just stay. Like that is our thing. We are not really um, people that like to move around a lot. We just really like to make a little home and branch out from there. Maybe there's a day trip here or there, but we really like to have like a solid place to stay. And this trip, we moved more than I'm even going to, it was crazy. We were in Brussels, then we went to the college, the college back to Brussels, Brussels to Amsterdam, Amsterdam back to Brussels, Brussels back to Paris, Paris to Brussels, Brussels to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to home. It was crazy. And we had our suitcases the entire time. It was just a bizarre situation. So we were in Paris on our way home to get to the airport hotel to fly home the next day. So we decided to stay in an airport hotel because it is close to it had a shuttle. We did not need to worry about buying tickets and it could get us to the airport as early as we needed, which was actually pretty early. So I was like, let's just get there and it's going to be fine. So we get to the Paris train station to take the train back to Brussels. And when we get there, we've got all of our luggage and... <laughs> You know, by now, you have quite a bit of luggage because you've picked up things here and there and you've picked up a souvenir because we weren't going to do any more shopping um, because we were just going to go to the airport hotel so that all the souvenirs had been bought and everything was packed, including, you know, the sweatshirts that you buy because it was cold and, (laughs) you know, all this stuff. So you're carrying quite a bit of stuff that you're like, how did we get this much stuff in this shorter period of time? So we're walking in the Paris, um, I was about to say airport, we were not at the airport, at the train station, and we walk, we're like, how, where do we buy tickets? How do we get back? You know, we had not um, bought round trip tickets because we wanted to give ourselves some flexibility. And so we walk over to the place that sells tickets and it is closed, like full on dark closed. We I think they had a sign, but uh, we don't speak French, which, by the way, if you're going to go to Paris, learn a little bit of French because it's really going to help you. We did not. And it was a mistake Um, (laughs) because even the people that speak a little bit of English, if you don't understand the accent, it's very hard for them to communicate with you and they get frustrated and it's just it's kind of a mess. Anyway, so we were standing there going, okay, what do we do? It is closed. We have no idea how to buy tickets to get back. And this lady came from behind these kiosks, um, a little small lady, and she came around and she came over and she's like, can I help you? And she had an, she had a French accent, but it was very clear like you could really understand what she was saying. There was just a little, like she had lived in the U.S. for a really long time, but still had her French accent. Like it was just super clear, which is the first person in Paris that we had run into with a very clear, um, that I understood accent. And so it was very bizarre. And so she came over and she's like, do you guys, 
is there what's going on? And we're like, well, we can't buy tickets. We'd like to go back to Brussels. And she's like, okay, come over here with me. And she walked us over to these little cubes and we're like, can we buy tickets here? Don't we need to show someone our passport and COVID tests? And she's like, no, no. And so she walked us through on this screen and it was all in French. So we had no idea what the questions were. And she'd be like, okay, this means this. And then type that information in. And this means this and type that information in. And she's like, okay, so I want you to do that. I'll be right back. So she walks around the corner. I didn't see her and then she came back and said did everything work and we said yes we think so and she's like great wonderful have a great trip and then the tickets came out but only two came out and she was very clear make sure you make that your emails right because you're not going to get the tickets it needs to go through your email and but two tickets came out and so I went to go find her and she disappeared like she was she helped nobody else all of a sudden, there was a line of like 15 people standing outside the, the closed ticket area, and she was nowhere to be found. I could not see her anywhere. She was gone. And we got our tickets, and we the place was packed, and so we kind of, we finally found a place to sit down, and Kevin looked at me, and he's like, how do you feel that we just dealt with an angel? And I was like, huh? you know like I've heard of that kind of thing like you know sure and whether she was an angel or not she was God sent to us she did not help anybody else in fact she wasn't even there before or after our encounter with her we just know that God placed her with an accent that we understood and that she understood us and walked us through minute (laughs) thing by thing and got us on the train we got on the train and the lady's like nope I don't want your tickets I need your email she it was so specific the things that God laid out with that lady or that angel that I just am a little overwhelmed (laughs) that God cared enough to either send a lady or send an angel to us to walk us through these really ridiculous Americans who have no idea what they're doing and no clue (laughs) how to get on a train by ourselves in a kiosk. That is not our gifting. (laughs) We are, we would rather stand in line and talk to a person than use a kiosk because when we use a kiosk, it never works to our advantage. Um, (laughs) It's not good at that kind of thing. And it was so amazing that this God cared enough about that small little detail. We had traveled so much at that point. We had, I, like I said, we had already gone from all this place to this place. And God knew at that moment that the place would be closed and that we would need someone to show us how to get tickets in a different way. Because they did not open that I ever saw. I never saw that they opened again. And it was, I think it was something about being short-staffed. I'm not 100% sure, but that's kind of what I was hearing or understanding from the sign, even though I could not read the sign. (laughs) So it was such a God thing. And for you, I want you to know that so often in life, God plants people in your life that are praying for you, that are standing beside you, that... Um, maybe aren't doing anything that is huge. They're maybe not, you know, coming in and babysitting your kids or coming in and cleaning your home. Although there are people that, you know, have done that for me in the past. Um, There are just people that just stand there and support. And they are a godsend. They are someone that God sends into your path. And I want you to start looking around for them. I know that when I got back from our trip, we ran into some issues that I was like, Lord, what are we going to do? I'm so overwhelmed by this. And God said, get people to pray. And so I texted just a few people um, and asked, said, told them what was going on and said, we need God to step in because we cannot do this. God needs to be in charge and just said, I just need people to pray. 
And so in your life, there are people that are praying for you. There are people that are standing next to you. Maybe there's just someone that's going to help you with a small transaction. It can be somebody even that smiles at you at a Walmart, which you know very rarely ever happens. No one's ever happy at a Walmart. <laughs> Why do I go to Walmart? Anyway. <laughs> It can just be that simplicity. Someone is nice to your kid, you know, and says something nice to your child. Those are God moments. Those are moments that you need to look and say, this is God saying, I love you. This is, I'm watching out for you. Things may be going crazy and chaotic and, you know, things are not going your way. But I sent that one person just to remind you that I love you. This week, let's look around. See who God has put in our path. There are many people. I love getting Christmas cards. It's one of my favorite things. We used to send out Christmas cards, and then it got really overwhelming, and so I stopped. Um, I need to get back to it. Some year, I will do that again. But I love Christmas cards more because I get to pray for those families that send me a Christmas card. We hang them up. And I pray for those families on almost a daily basis during the Christmas season and pray for peace and love and joy in their life. They have no idea that I'm praying for them. They have no clue. Um, but God loves them enough to have me have that reminder. And there is things that you're just not going to see that God is putting in your path to show you his love and his grace and his mercy. Well, that is all I have for this week. You can find us at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and on Facebook. We would love to have you come join our community there. You can also find me at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. All of my information is there. We are currently working on our schedule for the spring and summer. So if you're hosting some women's events, we can get some dates on the calendar. I would love to come out and just share God's love with the ladies in your church. Well, you all have a blessed week. I pray that God sends people into your life and to show you his love and his compassion and that he has a plan for your life.